Hello everyone, I hope that you are doing well. Uh, today we are going to start a new topic, which is just continuing what we learned last class. And th this class is also very interesting. I think it's also one of my favorite classes because we are going to learn something new, that it's a new arbitrage strategy. And now we are going to uh, learn how to deal with time because previously with the triangular arbitrage, we only learned to do uh, the triangle between countries, but it was only in the present. So now we are going to take care of time and that is also very interesting. So in this video, I will focus on, on the conceptual part. In the next one, I'm going to review uh, how do we calculate um, the, the future price of a currency using this new theory. Then we're going to do an exercise and finally we're going to learn this very interesting arbitrage strategy. So um, let me begin with uh, this video with kind of a reminder about last week. Uh, the objective of last week was for you to understand that inflation has a huge impact on exchange rates. Uh, if you remember my story about the burger uh, in between the US and Mexico, and its increase on the price and how that affected the exchange rate uh, of the Mexican peso and the dollar. That's awesome because that's the main objective of what we learned in the last uh, class. So, so far we know that, um, that inflation is important, right? So inflation, it's a very important variable. The change on the prices. But apart from that, what is also important, and that was part of the homework, how, can, how could you improve the PPP theory? So, uh, so far I think uh, today is Saturday and I think there are only like four or five homeworks that people have submitted, but don't worry, it's okay. You have until Tuesday. But there is something that this theory, the law of one price, the theory that is related to inflation, the PPP theory, is ignoring. And that is risk. What is risk? Risk is the chance that something might happen or might not happen, right? It's like uh, the degree of uncertainty that things can go as smooth as we know. Like uh, there is a risk that tomorrow the world might end. It's a very low risk or maybe now not so low with the coronavirus, but it's still a risk, right? There is also a risk that maybe um, the government can change a law and that will make business more difficult. There is a risk that maybe uh, the crime will increase and that will make business more difficult. Those are risks in general. And we learned from the last class that inflation is reflected in the, with the variable inflation, right? I think in the formula it was a pi, right? Like this. What about risk? What do you think? it's the variable that can summarize risk, the risk of a country. What will be that variable? Well, that variable will be the real interest rate. The interest rate, but in the real version. This is supposed to be an R, right? R, something like that. So uh, in inflation, inflation is important because it shows that the change on prices affects the exchange rate but also risk. And risk is defined as the real interest rate. Okay, so what's the difference between the real interest rate and the nominal interest rate? The nominal interest rate is the one that you read on the newspapers, the one that you find on Bloomberg. That is the nominal interest rate because nominal means that the one that is announced. And real, it's only nominal minus inflation. So if you add up real plus inflation, what do you get in the end? You get the nominal interest rate, which we usually uh, name as an I, like here. So this will be the nominal interest rate. Oh, what's wrong with my mouse? That's why I lose when I play video game, interest rate. Oh, again. Okay. So this new theory, it's an improved theory from what we learned in the last uh, week. This theory considers risk, which is also very important in determining the prices of the exchange rate. So 
in the end, we are going to use this variable, the nominal interest rate, because it includes both inflation and the risk of the country. I hope this is not confusing. Uh, here in the presentation, I also have this. The real interest rate is the risk of the country, only the risk without inflation. And inflation are the changes on prices of goods and services. And if you add up these two, you have the nominal interest rate. Remember that when you add up rates, you don't only use plus, right? Like 0 0.05 plus 0 0.03. It doesn't work like that. You need to add one plus and then multiply times one plus the other rate. That's how you add up rates. Maybe you remember this from financial math, but don't worry, this is not that relevant in this course, I think. But I think I always give you the right rate. But just keep it on mind, make a note about this. Maybe you remember this from uh, financial math. And this, this uh, theory also has some assumptions. It says that markets are efficient and open. And in that case, the real rate will reflect the risk of the country. But mm, sometimes, well, most of the times, Markets are not efficient and markets are not open. Remember, because markets are not efficient, it is possible to make triangular arbitrage. And we are going to learn another strategy. So even though this rate, the, sorry, this theory is um, better or, or improved compared to the one from previous week, and even though that this theory won a Nobel Prize uh, about 40 years ago or 50 years ago, it's still not perfect. It's still not the, the, the perfect theory because it assumes things that doesn't happen in real life. It's great. We, it's so good that uh, in, the, in, the, in the real life, people use this formula to value currencies and, and derivatives and financial assets and a lot of things. It's really good, but it's still not perfect. So there is still a chance to, to improve this. There are, I don't know, uh, th th there is a huge effort around the world, like banks and universities and everyone trying to improve this theory. There are some improvements, but it makes it so technical that you need a computer to do the calculations. So in the end, a lot of people still use this because it's simple and it works more or less okay. And especially you, since this is, uh, in most of your cases, the maybe the only or the last financial course that you're going to take, I think this is relevant for you that you understand what this theory is about. So um, I think I can jump onto this, um, this slide. And again, this is the same thing. It all, it, there, it's only mentioning the assumptions about this theory just for you to know that this theory is not perfect. And finally, this is where I wanted to, to, to end up. And from here, I think I'm, I will move on to do an exercise because this is the formula that you should be using uh, this formula is similar to the relative PPP. Um, do you remember that from last week? Relative PPP formula. It's somehow similar because you want to calculate the price of, um, of an exchange rate in the future. But there are some differences. I will also note these differences in the next video when we do the exercise. But let me tell you. First, here, time is not in in years do you remember in the other formula it was in years right here it's not like that here it's in days so time is in days i will write that in excel in the name don't don't worry that much i'm sorry about my terrible writing that's the first difference in this formula the formula for the forward we have time in days the other difference that is very important is that in the other one, we had a compound interest, right? Do you remember we used to have an exponent? And in here, it's simple interest because we only multiply the time divided by 360 times the interest rate, the nominal interest rate of that country. It's mathematically simpler, but uh, we will practice, so don't worry about it. So the second difference is that the interest, it's simple. And finally, the last difference that I think maybe this is the most obvious is that we are not using inflation. We are using the nominal interest rate. Remember that because there are some tricks sometimes on the exercises when I give you the real interest rate. So it's always the nominal interest rate because the nominal include both inflation and 
uh, risk. So these are the three differences. Sorry for my, my bad writing, and, and, and but don't worry, I will take over again in the next video when we do the exercise. So it's the formula that we're going to use. In the end, it's the same logic. It's the difference between the interest rates of two countries, and you multiply that difference times the spot rate. And with that, you get the expected rate in the future. This formula, as I told you, won a Nobel Prize 40 years ago, maybe. And uh, it, it's so good that people still use it to value uh, financial instruments. That's why instead of calling this the expected spot or something like that, we call it the forward rate. So that's why it has an F. So it's so good, this formula or this theory, it's, it's, it's relatively so good that we use it to value derivatives such as forwards. We will also check this on partial tree and when we see derivatives, but remember that uh, instead of having an S, like in the other one, in the relative PPP, we still have the S for a spot. But in here, we don't have the S, we have the F of forward. So don't worry if you are maybe a little bit confused right now. I think with practice, it will get better. And remember, of course, you can come over if you want to ask me something uh, on Zoom. Uh, in the next video, I will start doing the exercise.